With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Members of the Senate Aging and Long-Term Care Policy Committee met remotely today to hear from Minnesotans frustrated by the COVID-19 vaccine rollout for seniors 65 and older. Here are some highlights. The reason for, for today's meeting is I'm sure like uh, many of, of you uh, members have gotten hundreds of, of emails, phone calls, text messages, uh, Facebook messages. Uh, I had another call yet again this morning from my friend up north um, about the vaccine rollout and how can we get the vaccines to to those who want it that are 65 and older. It's, it's been um, frustrating for many that they aren't able to um, get any answers. They're not a there isn't a list that they can get on. Um, there's not a phone number that they can call. So they've kind of just been uh, running on this hamster wheel and they just want answers. And I figured since we heard last week that there were 4,800 Minnesotans that had actually um, given written testimony to the vaccine advisory board, I thought we'd give them a, a platform for us to hear from, from real Minnesotans on what their um, concerns were with the vaccine rollout and how they feel it should be going. I've had to postpone all my dental appointments and by had to, I mean, it was my choice and had to cancel several doctor's appointments, graduations, birthdays, and holidays. I've all ordered all of my groceries online and picked up prescriptions and any other things that I need curbside. I'm sure we've all had to do this, but when you are my age and you don't know how many years you have left, it's really hard to um, put your life on hold for a whole year or maybe more. In December, I lost two very close relatives and a good friend to COVID. They were in nursing homes and I couldn't visit them and I couldn't attend their funerals. We've had great hopes with the vaccine, and according to the news, the first tier uh, should be administered by the end of January. I spoke with my endocrinologist last week at the University of Minnesota and asked what the policy is for administering the next round of vaccines, since all of my doctors are on the staff there. And she said she doesn't know of any policy or procedure. And I cannot believe that the state and one of the largest medical facilities in the state has not been planning for vac vaccinating the next groups. I have a 94-year-old living grandfather who's a veteran, and he is caring for his wife who has middle-of-the-road dementia symptoms. And then my other grandparents, my grandfather, is also caring for his my grandma who also has dementia. So um, this has been a hard year for a lot of people. And that being said, you know, it's my, I feel like my role as a granddaughter to fight for them and to help them understand when it is time for them to go get a vaccine. You know, they're, they, each of them have five children. They have been quarantined just as much as um, the previous um, woman had shared. It's been, it's been really difficult. So we don't need to tell anyone that, but I can tell you that after probably three weeks of working with the VA system, um, they just recently decided to start vaccinating 85 and older. Uh, it, it took probably four or five phone calls just this Monday to finagle away to figure out if they're going to be vaccinating 85 and older. So being that being said, you know, I just want to make it clear that most people don't have an advocate like myself, and it's very confusing. My mom is 89. She'll be turning 90 at the beginning of April. She lives alone in her own home where she has lived for over 50 years. She's comfortable there, and she's able to take care of herself quite well. She walks two miles a day on her treadmill and spends her days quilting and reading, and she can clean circles around me. She's amazing. She really is. But since last March 14th, my mom has rarely left her home and she's so very, very lonely. Um, I'm retired and I don't see other people, so I'm clean. So I go to visit her once a month or so, but I had COVID over the holidays and now she's even scared to death to see me. Every single holiday this year, she was all alone. 
She wants to be vaccinated, so she called our local doc doctor's office in Pipestone, and the clinic told her they weren't sure when she would be in line for a vaccine, but that she should watch our, lo our local weekly newspaper and listen to our local radio station to find out when the vaccine would be available to her. My nephew, who is her grandson, is getting married on March 13th, and she really, really wants to go to the wedding because she hasn't really been out of the house in a year but she will not go if she hasn't received the vaccine. Um, this is just one, one of the many ways in which her world has been upside down since COVID started. In other states, elderly individuals can sign up to make an appointment online to receive a vaccine. Since I live in Southwest Minnesota, we live very close to um, South Dakota, just a couple miles, it's a couple miles from my house. And the elderly there can receive their vaccines now. So why isn't Minnesota up to speed with what other states are doing? And why is it so hard to get any information about where and when my mom can be vaccinated? I have a drugstore, a local community drugstore in Winstead, Minnesota, so about 50 miles west of Minneapolis. And um, we would really like to vaccinate as many seniors as we possibly can. We're just not really given the opportunity to do so. Um, I heard on the news this morning that less than 35% of the doses that have been dispersed have actually been utilized. And to me, that is a tragedy. Um, states like West Virginia didn't go along with the using the uh, two chains to be able to roll the vaccine out. And they are 100% complete with phase one. I think if uh, Minnesota Department of Health and even the Minnesota Board of Pharmacy would understand the value that community pharmacists bring to the communities and how quickly we could get the vaccine out, uh, Minnesota would be in much better, a uh, much better in a different place right now. My mom was in the hospital when they got the shot at her facility. When my mom went back to her facility, she was not allowed to have the shot. And they told her that she could not have her shot until they came back for the second dose, which would be in February. I don't understand why. Um, I've offered to take my mom to the doctor to get the shot. Nobody will give me the answer for that. Um, I have a problem with only the nursing home getting the shot because we have assisted living there. We have memory care there. We have staff that goes throughout the building. And so if you're going to give it to one, I feel you should give it to all of them. Um, I just, I really feel that the Minnesota Department of Health is playing games with our loved ones' lives. I have my 92-year-old mother living with me. Um, she probably takes better care of me than I do of her. She's very, very uh, adept at what she does. Uh, she's a retired RN. And... Um, we're both having issues understanding why the Minnesota Department of Health is failing us so um, dramatically. Uh, there has been no communication. There are no phone numbers, as Dr. Scott Jensen mentioned. There's nothing on the news. We were, Governor Walz's office was, was fully adequate in providing us updates on the virus. Uh, they even mentioned that the federal government was failing in, in um, coming to uh, grips with how we might administer this and coming up with a plan. And at the same time, they were neglecting providing any type of a plan for their residents of Minnesota. Um, I feel that at this point in time, uh, if they don't have a solution, then they should step down and get out of the way. When, you, when you're on the cusp of the, you know, 69, 70, and, and you're under those you're not first. That's fine. I don't, you know, none of my neighbors mind not being first. They just want to know when they can get it because, you know, um, we're very careful in our association and we're very careful what we do and, um, you know, social distancing. And so everyone's been very careful. They just want to go on living 